Every round in this rifle could save a bird's life. The splash of the bullet scares migrating species off this mile-long toxic lake in Montana. If birds land there for more than a few hours, the acidic water cooks them from the inside out. It's Mark Mariano's mission to make sure that doesn't happen. Yep, Mark Mariano, waterfowl protection specialist. We invented that title, but it, it fits. He uses a multi-million dollar arsenal of high-tech tools to keep birds off of what used to be a copper mine in Butte, Montana. This is the one everybody likes to see, though. <laughs> Do you get to fly the drone? That's what they all say. <laughs> no, no. What's now a toxic bird bath started out as an open pit mine 65 years ago. But in 1982, the company that owned the mine shut down the water pumps. Groundwater started to seep in, creating sulfuric acid that leached metals out of the rock. People have been shooing birds off the Berkeley pit ever since. And some of the methods they've developed here could help protect the estimated hundreds of millions of birds killed by industrial activity every year. Snow geese, avocets, and grebes are just a few of the species that stop in Butte on their journey north in spring and south in fall. And Mark loves them all. And your widgeon, teal, I mean, I dream, sleep, eat, and poop, you know, ducks. We obviously went over the top with the wildlife decor. My mom bought me this one and I told her it was stupid. And now I love it. <laughs> but the sounds that repel birds are more unnatural. So we're gonna move it over, there it goes. Always when you're trying to talk. The first line of defense is four so-called whalers. They randomly play a series of alarms to annoy the birds. You can hear these things on a you know, nice warm summer night all across Butte. And propane cannons hooked up to timers fire all day. They mimic gunfire, which a lot of the um, birds are scared of for obvious reasons. On special occasions, the birds might get their own private fireworks display. This is a kind of a last resort, or we know, you know, something big would be coming. We've used them twice. One of Mark's favorite tools is meant for spotting the birds before they get wet. It's a $5,000 Swarovski scope. But after nearly four years on the job, he can usually spot them with the naked eye. Can you see them? No. <laughs> I'm going to keep laying on them, because if we can get, keep them from landing, that's always the best. HQ is this small hut along the same ridge where the mine's dispatcher used to direct trucks. They call it the Bird Shack. We've discussed renaming it something more professional sounding than Bird Shack, but it's become such kind of a colloquial term that we kept it. During peak season, someone like Mark comes up here every hour to do what they call hazing. That's the technical term for annoying birds that land on the pit so they fly away. We got a group coming in. One, two, three, four, five. And it looks like more shovelers. So there's 33. Two, three, 43. When they first started scaring off birds 30 years ago, their only tools were a rifle and a clipboard. They didn't even have heat during the long Montana winters. For the most part, it worked even if the miners' records looked like a real-life game of duck-duck-goose. That changed in 2016. Snow geese migrate through Montana every year, but that November, an estimated 60,000 of them landed on the pit. Essentially, the entire snow goose population of our flyway came overnight, hit a nasty storm, and ended up using the worst rest stop that they possibly could. This could be myth now, you know, um, but they shot the gun so many times, the barrel like essentially curved because it got too hot. 
About 3,000 birds died in a matter of days, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Those guys choke up when they, you know, you're a burly miner talking about coming out here and seeing, you know, thousands of snow geese on there. After that, the companies working to clean up the pit brought in experts to devise a more scientific approach. The researchers discovered that the pit attracts over 50 bird species, not just ducks and geese. The companies invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into fancy high-tech tools, but many didn't work. It turns out that each kind of bird responds differently. With each of the technologies, as well as the simple stuff, a combo of them can help sometimes. And then usually one will pick up where the other leaves off. The aerial drone is most effective when birds land on ice or the shore, where there's a risk a bullet could ricochet. Mark's high-powered laser works well on American coots and other species that like to migrate at night. In 2016, they custom-built drones just for the pit. Early prototypes combined 3D printed parts with boogie boards and kid-sized kayaks. So they're at your 10 o'clock. Today, technicians use a remote control to operate what they call the water dog. Here's the group. Oh, they probably went onto your view to the left a little bit now. Sometimes the boat gets the birds to lift off. Then a rifle shot gets them to fly away. This new and improved suite of tools has a near perfect record of keeping birds off this deadly human made mess. Successful programs like the one at the pit are more important than ever. Nearly a third of North America's bird population has disappeared since 1970. Mining is to blame for destroying habitat, but some cleanup efforts have worked, just not always in the way people expect. For a prime example of that, you need to travel about 20 miles downstream. Every year, hundreds of thousands of birds stop here, the Warm Springs Wildlife Management Area. It's where researchers Stella Kaposha and Gary Swant come to count birds. Oh, we've got some American avocets. Yep. These scientists helped design the pit's upgraded protection program. The reports that we do here on Mondays and Wednesdays are posted in the bird shack. So these uh, miners have a good predictive instrument of what might be in the pit. So here's a cinnamon teal that uh, hmm. you probably haven't seen one of those yet this year. During peak season, Gary's grandson also helps with the count. We'll usually peak at like 50,000, 60,000 birds in the valley, and those are long days. Those are like 10 hour days. The team comes to Warm Springs because it's a biodiverse haven that has hosted more than half of Montana's bird species. But just like the Berkeley pit, it was created by humans. This is a constructed area that now um, has then turned into a preserve for the wildlife. In 1908, a flood washed mining waste from Butte into local waterways. It killed fish and made the water unsafe for humans. After that catastrophe, these ponds were built so that hard metals could seep out of the water before they run downstream. Giant hoppers neutralize the water with lime. That keeps things clean and safe enough for wildlife. So the event happened in a single month in 1908, and here we are still getting it cleaned up. It feels wonderful because we can correct the problems of the past. Experts caution that it's impossible to erase over 100 years of mining pollution. But with people like Gary, Stella, and Mark on the job, the future for Montana's birds might be looking up. But not if you're a wild turkey. I am by no means a seasoned turkey hunter, so this is my very first. But we saved everything. Mark takes pride in not letting anything go to waste. I made it real traditional, like a chicken noodle soup. It's even gluten-free, if you can believe that. Has anyone ever pointed out to you the irony of the fact that your entire job is to keep wild birds safe and you go hunting? 
I'm a big waterfowl hunter as well. And what that has taught me about protecting the waterfowl at the pit is just priceless. I wake up without an alarm every morning and I'm you know, happy to go you know, literally rescue birds. And most days you walk home you know, with your head held high. 